I don't know a lot about the trucking industry. Yeah. And I know that this is an industry that people can make a lot of money at. You're the yeah. expert. So I yeah. want to hit you with as many, as long as your time permits, I want to hit you with as many questions that I personally want to know and I think are going to help people who are either trying to get into the industry or they're in it and they're trying to work their way up. How did you even get into this industry? No doubt. So I'll start with saying that I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm more of an enthusiast. I'm more of a practitioner. I'm more of a, a student of the game, right? I don't think we could ever really be experts. I think we're always learning and, and, and every day is something new, especially yep. in transportation. Transportation is so wide and so vast of a of, of an industry and there's so many different niches and so many different uh, areas of transportation and of the industry that you can never really be an expert. You know what I mean? So we're always learning. Well um, said, in terms of how well I, said. In, in terms of how I got into the industry, Sean, it's really interesting because, you know, I actually just kind of stumbled in this industry. Growing up, you know, I, I, I grew up, I, I come from Brooklyn, um, just, just, just really quick, come from Brooklyn um, and, you know, moved to, moved to Jersey as a young kid. And growing up, I, I wanted to be a rapper, right? That was my thing. So when I used to see truck truckers or, or anything re re regarding a truck, you know, there, there was really nobody that looked like me or, or, or nothing that inspired me there to make me want to say, hey, man, I, I want to do that when I grow up or whatever the case may be. I didn't feel like there was a place for me there. And just and that was literally just like the exposure. I didn't have exposure. I didn't, I didn't know anybody who was in the industry to really understand that that, was, that would be an opportunity for me. Um, but you know, to, to, to kind of fast forward a little bit, the way I got into the industry was really, man, out of desperation, man. You know, I, I, I was at a point in my life early, I was about 20, 20, 21 years old, and I was just looking for work. I was looking for a job, and I was trying to figure out something that I could do that could make me money immediately, right? So, you know, just looking through the paper and trying to, you know, back then you look through a paper, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to figure out, like, what, what makes sense, you know what I mean? And I had done, done other things previously, you know, I've always had an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit. I, I've had different businesses prior to that. You know, but at this time, you know, those things didn't work out, but and I needed money. So I looked through and I found, you know, hey man, get your CDL, you can make 50,000, you can make 75,000, you can make, you know, you know, diff this amount of money. And there was plenty of jobs, plenty of opportunities. So I'm like, man, this sounds like it makes sense. So at this time, I'm literally like on unemployment, right? So um, the wh where I was at, they were actually paying people to go, paying for people to go to truck driving school. So although it was something that was foreign to me, I was like, man, you know, Hey man, you know, if I could, you know, do this thing, drive a truck, it seems easy enough. I can get into this industry and I can make some decent money for myself. So I did that. You know, I went to truck driving school. Um, you know, that in itself was an experience because it was just something new. Uh, you know, I had to learn how to shift the gears. I at, at this time I didn't even know how to drive a manual car, right? I still was driving the automatic. So I had to learn, you know, the the, the different speeds of the gears. You got 10 speed truck, 13 speed. So you, you know. You, you have to learn, it's, it's, a, it's a full learning curve, right? So I did that. This trucking school probably took about, and, and, and you know, forgive me if I'm wrong, because it was, this was a while ago, but it probably was about maybe six weeks, right? Six weeks for the course, and after that, you take your, you, you, you take your, uh, they, they, they take you, you have to take, you have to actually pass like a written test first, mm -hmm. right? And then after you pass the written test, then you have to do your road test, right? Stop, so- Stop there for one second. I want to, because I, I, I want to, to get as uh, in the weeds as humanly possible in this interview. Okay. Number one, you said you were on unemployment and this course was offered for free. Do you know if, if, if these courses are still offered for free or if it was yeah. just during the time that you took it? And then secondly, you said it was a, how, how long was it? A six week class or six months? I believe it was about six weeks that it took me for, to actually get my CDL. By the sixth, the sixth week, I was actually taking my road test. Okay, so what what did the classes look like? Are they five days a week? Are they, you know, seven in the morning to three in the afternoon? Just give us an idea of what these classes look like. Yeah, so to answer the first question, uh, yes, I do believe. Now, I haven't looked into it recently, mm -hmm. but I do believe that you can usually go to whatever any town, like most cities, like if you go through unemployment, they usually offer some sort of uh, program to where they'll sponsor people to go get their CDLs. They have 
uh, different relationships with different truck driving schools. Like, you know, in Jersey, where I'm at, there's like, there's Allstate, there's Smith and Solomon. And usually what they do in order to encourage people to come into their school, because obviously they're getting this money, you know, from the government. They So they, it's encur they're, they're encouraging people to come into the school. So they'll have relationships with with uh, with the city and they'll send, they'll, they'll basically sponsor people to come to the school. So that's how I got in. If you paid out of pocket, it's going to cost you about $4,000 at the time. Right. So I'm not sure that number may have changed, mm -hmm. you know, since then. But it was around four thousand dollars at the time. But I was sponsored. I got in for free wow. um, in, in terms of uh, the, 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 uh, the time period. It took I believe it was a daily course for six weeks. I, I believe I was there every day, maybe maybe three or four days out of the week. Maybe we had one day off. But for the most part, it was every day during the week for about six weeks. So they take you through different steps like the first at first, they're gonna the first couple of weeks you go through the written portion, right? You learn how to do like your logs, right? So like you're in a classroom. You're you're doing classroom so stuff. So even right? though you're you're learning about being on the road, the first half of the classes are in the classroom, understanding, and you can go into it. I'm assuming all of the basics. Um, yes, a hundred percent. So they're gonna teach teach you obviously like the rules and regulations of the road. Right. They're going to teach you about different things like, you know, um, like safety, compliance. At that time, they're teaching up, teaching you how to log. Like now they have what they call e-logs, like electronic logs to where you don't do manual logs anymore. But at, at, when I got my CDL, you actually had to write out your logs and your logs are basically the time that you drive every day. Because as a driver, you're only allowed to drive for 11 hours in one day and you're allowed to drive and work combination 11 hours and uh, 14 hours of on, of, of on duty. So you can't have a, a work day longer than 14 hours. So every day you have to log those days because if you get pulled over, right, um, the Department of Transportation, they're gonna wanna see your logs and they wanna make sure you're not driving illegally. So that's one of the most important aspects of driving. You have to know how to log your time. But now, you know, obviously it's almost 20 years later, Everything is everything is automated. Everything is you know computers and technology. Now you do all that on a computer, and you have to you know show the the uh, the police officer your e logs, and they can look through it the same exact way. So yeah, they're teaching you all the fundamentals and all the things that you're going to need kind of behind behind the seat, outside of the driving before you actually go out there and and actually drive. So so during that time, we're learning that, and then you have to actually take a test, right? Uh, to pass that 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 written is a they call it the written portion, right? So you 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 take that test and that's going to be like on all the concepts and different things, um, you know that that kind of just discuss like compliance and all those kind of things, right? And then after you take that test in two weeks, once you pass that portion, you can also take your endorsements as well. Now, as a driver, you have different different endorsements. You could be a, have a passenger endorsement. You could have a hazmat endorsement. I, I'm I'm sorry. Again, this is your world. It's not mine. What, okay. what is an endorsement? I, all I, right. I know so what that means in general term. An endorsement allows you as a driver to do specialized, uh, different specialized things. Right, so you could have your CDL. So, to, okay, so to break it down, the top CDL you could have is a CDL class A, right? That class A is the top type of uh, license you could have, right? That allows you to drive a tractor trailer and anything below it, right? So you, if you have a CDL class A, you could drive a tractor trailer, any combination vehicle, right? You could also drive things like, like uh, dump trucks. You can drive like waste management trucks. And you can drive all the way down to straight trucks, box trucks, whatever you want to drive, right? Stay there for one second. Is, yeah. there, is there more required of you? Is there more schooling? Is it more money? Like, in order to get that class A, is it more required of you um, in terms of, of the schooling for you to get that class A? No. So, so it depends on what you go to school for. So some people go to school to get their class B, right? Your class B is like if you want to be a bus driver. So you don't have to get your class A, but if you get your class A, it covers everything, yep. right? So I always advise people, if you're gonna get a CDL, you might as well get the class A because that'll allow you to drive any type of vehicle, right? Now, the what the endorsements are, are those are add-ons, right? So what the endorsement does, and, and basically what you have to do is you have to take uh, specific tests, written tests, in order to get those endorsements. So for example, hazmat. Right. A hazmat endorsement allows you to haul chemicals. Right. Things are that are corrosive. Right. Things that, you know, can poison you. 
right? So that that's a part, that's a written portion that you have to pass because it lets it, it it shows that you understand what the placards are and, and the different compliance that goes into hauling hazardous material, right? So that that that's the hazmat endorsement. You could also get your passenger endorsement, right? So now your passenger endorsement allows you to carry people, right? Drive a bus. Right. Then you have doubles, you have triples. So a lot of times you'll see tractor trailers on the road. You'll see one trailer. If you get your doubles and your triples, now you can have a trailer and you can have two trailers hooked up or sometimes three trailers hooked up. But that takes that's furthering your education. And that's a different endorsement that you have to have on that license. So all of that stuff will be on your license. If somebody looks at your license, they'll show that you have a class A. And on the back, it'll show that you have these specific endorsements, additional endorsements, P passenger endorsement, hazmat endorsement. And, and that just basically makes you more marketable. You, you have more opportunity with more endorsements because you can do more jobs. You can do things that everybody else can do. It's like being a Navy SEAL. You know what I mean? Like you can be a you could be in the Marines, but if you're like a Navy SEAL, now you're yep. kind of specialized. You have a specialized training that allows you to go a little bit further. And obviously, if you know if you have specialties, you can charge more too, right? You can you can you can you, when you work, you're going to get paid more because because of uh, because of your knowledge. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.